Okay, so the purpose of this video is to determine how to, or to show how to determine whether or not a Simulink system model represents a linear system. And uh, you'll recall, of course, that in order to test whether or not a Simulink system model or any system is linear, uh, you have to check to see if it's homogeneous and you have to check to see if it's additive. So we're going to show how to do this uh, again using Simulink. Now one caveat that we have to put into this, in order to actually show that a system is linear, I have to show that it satisfies homogeneity and additivity for any possible input. Now obviously I can't test a system with any possible input using Simulink. I just don't have time. So um, what we will be able to do is show well, if we can show that it doesn't satisfy homogeneity or additivity for just one input, then it's not linear. And it turns out in practice that most systems, if you can show that it's homogeneous and additive for things like a couple sinusoids and maybe a unit step function, that probably means it's linear. But again, that doesn't prove it's linear. Um, so you can come up with things that just don't work. So we're going to do this with an example, and the example is this system that I've already drawn where the output of this system is 2 times the input of the system plus 1. Okay, and so again we're going to see if we can figure out if this represents a linear system using Simulink. And again, does it satisfy homogeneity and additivity? So we'll bring Simulink to the front. And I've already gone and uh, created the system that we're going to test in Simulink. So you can see we have the input. This is a sine wave, an arbitrary input. The input is multiplied by 2, and then we add 1, and that's the output. And uh, when you put a sine wave of amplitude 1 into this system, you can see the output, uh, it goes up, it starts at 1, goes up to 3, goes down to minus 1, back up to 3, and so on. So that's what this system does. Now we're going to see if this actually satisfies homogeneity. Now, because we're going to use this system in several different places at the same time to do this, the first thing we want to do is select the elements of the system and then right click on it and say create subsystem. Okay, so you can see now that this whole system that um, has as its, or that takes its input, multiplies it by 2 and adds 1, is now represented by this one box. If I run the simulation, it runs again, and if I look at the output, it remains the same as it did before. Okay, so the nice part about this is I can now uh, cut and paste, or copy and paste this subsystem anywhere I need to have an implementation of the system running. Now we're going to test homogeneity, and homogeneity says that if I take um, an, the input, multiply it by some constant, and run it through my system, it's the same as the output multiplied by that same constant. So, first thing I'm going to do is copy my subsystem and then uh, paste it. Well, that certainly didn't work. Um, okay, we're going to paste it and we're going to try to zoom back in. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I want to have the input of my original system, but I want to multiply it by a constant. So I'm going to go to my math operations, grab a gain. This is going to be the constant, and we'll start by arbitrarily calling this constant 2. Now we can try a couple other values too if we need to. And I connect the system with the gain, or the input with the gain, up. So now I have 
uh, my two times my input going into this version of the system as I have going into this version of the system. And I'm going to take the output of this guy and run it to a scope so I can see what it looks like. And so we'll hook that up. And now here, rather than taking the output of my original system, or my system, and running it through a scope directly, I want to put a gain in here because this is corresponding to taking the output of the system and multiplying it by my gain. Okay. So there we go. We have this all set up. Now, just to make sure it's clear what we're doing, let me go back and actually write this out. The top row in my uh, diagram, in fact, we can put the diagram up here, although we won't be able to keep it up here as soon as I um, start to draw. So the top row in my diagram corresponds to taking the input, running it through the system, and then taking the output and multiplying it by this, this uh, uh, value, which in this case is 2. The bottom row of my uh, system here corresponds to multiplying the input by 2 then running it by this or through the system and then looking at what I get out. Now if the system is linear I should get the same thing out on the top row as I get out on the bottom row. So let's actually see if that's the case. So we'll uh, run the simulation. We'll bring up a scope somewhere. Here's our scope. And we'll get our other scope. Here it is. And we see if we can get these to be about the same well, about the same span, you'll notice that this is not the same. My um, one from the top row has a starts at a value of 2 and goes up actually to 6, down to minus 2. Uh, my output from the bottom row starts at 1, goes up to 5, down to minus 3, and so on. So these are not the same, which basically means that this system that we're looking at right here, this uh, guy right here, is not a linear system. You may find this somewhat surprising, um, and probably at the end of the next video uh, I'll talk about that a little more, because it looks like we're running out of time. So, well actually no, we'll go ahead and do additivity. This will just be a long video. Okay, so um, we already know that the system's not linear because it doesn't so satisfy homogeneity. But let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to determine if it's also additive. So um, the way we would do this is uh, we'll basically start by tidying up a bit. So I'm going to have an input, which I'll call, say, this first input I'm going to have I'm going to have be x1, and that's going to generate an output. The system's going to generate an output. So I'm going to have another input. So we'll go to the sources menu and put in a step function, because I like step functions. And then we're going to copy and paste my system that I'm testing, which is this one. 
uh, connect it up to the step input, and then we're going to add the two outputs together. So the out, so the sum of these two things is going to be um, what in previous videos we've talked about as uh, y1 plus y2. So we get a summing node. This guy, and we wire this summing node to the output of the first system, wire the summing node to the output of the second system, and send this to the scope. Okay, so this is basically going to give us we have an input, we run it through the system, we have a second input, we run it through the system, we add the two outputs and run that to a scope. Now we're going to make a third copy of the system. which we do down here, and we're going to feed this from an adder, and the input to our adder is going to be the two signals. Okay, and uh, we'll get another scope. And this gives us the output of the system in response to the sum of the two signals. Now, if this system satisfies additivity, then the two things that we're going to see on the scopes will be the same. So let's run the simulation. And it seems to think it's done. Bring up scope 1 and scope 2. Okay, so this is the output if we take the two signals, run them through, and sum the resulting signals. This next guy is the output if we sum the two signals first and then run them through the system. And you can see once again that they are not the same, which means that this system does not satisfy linearity. So uh, what we've shown is that the system is not or does not satisfy additivity. So we've shown that this system is not linear. The part of this system that causes it to not be linear is this guy right here. It turns out if you were to set that to zero and go back and redo the example, you would discover that this is indeed, or that with, with uh, this guy gone, the addition of one gone, this is a linear system. I'm not going to do that because I'm out of time. I'll leave that as an exercise for the interested viewer, which I'm sure is absolutely everybody. So that's how we find out if a system model is linear using Simulink.